Let's review the aldol reaction and the aldol condensation and see how those reactions can be applied to synthesis problems. So let's see an example of an aldol reaction. If we have acid aldehyde and we treat it with a base like hydroxide, what's going to happen is we're going to react two equivalents of acid aldehyde. One equivalent is going to serve as the nucleophile, so the alpha carbon is going to serve as our nucleophile and the other will be our electrophilic component uh, at the carbonyl position. And so that's why we use a, a mild base because that will ensure that both of these components will be present in our reaction mixture. And that's the bond that's gonna be formed. It forms a new carbon-carbon bond. So that makes it a pretty important reaction. And it's gonna give us a product, which is a beta hydroxy carbonyl. And when we use an aldehyde to do this reaction, the reaction, the product can be described as an aldol product because it has both an aldehyde functional group and an alcohol functional group. So this is actually one of the few name reactions that's not named after a chemist, uh, but rather the description of the product we get. So here's our aldehyde portion, here's our alcohol portion. That's why this reaction is described as an aldol reaction. So we can use the aldol to form a beta hydroxy carbonyl, aldehyde or ketone. Uh, but if we continue this reaction, the same reaction conditions, usually we add heat to the reaction mixture to promote the uh, loss of water, we can get what's known as the condensation reaction. And that's where we eliminate uh, water and we get an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. And that, that is the reaction that's described as the aldol condensation. So let's review the mechanism for um, this complete reaction here. We start with uh, our acid aldehyde and we have a base. This reaction actually can be catalyzed by acid or base, but the base mechanism is a little more efficient. We'll look at that one uh, to describe the mechanism. And uh, so we're gonna start by deprotonating the alpha carbon and that's going to result in an enolate. But because we're using a milder base, such as hydroxide, we're not using a strong base like LDA, this is uh, setting up an equilibrium. So just a small amount of the aldehyde is going to be converted to the enolate, which means we also have the neutral aldehyde present in our reaction conditions. So that's how we end up having our nucleophile, the enolate, present as our nucleophile, and the electrophile is going to be our carbonyl, and that is the uh, reaction that's going to be taking place next is the nucleophilic attack onto the carbonyl. So our enolate is going to attack the carbonyl, and this is our carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. So we're going to get an O minus. We're used to have the carbonyl. And our final step in this mechanism is going to be to protonate. So if we're doing this in our protic solvent, we used hydroxide in the first step. And we're going to form the neutral alcohol product. So we have our beta hydroxy aldehyde. Uh, aldehyde. So we could describe our three steps here as first protonate. Uh, I'm sorry, first deprotonate and then attack, and then protonate using our catalytic uh, base. For the loss of water, that mechanism is going to be a two-step mechanism in base. It's going to be a two-step mechanism. The first step is going to be deprotonation to form the enolate. We're going to form an enolate by removing the alpha proton. And again, this is reversible. So a small amount of this enolate is going to be formed in our uh, reaction conditions. But what's very interesting is, is now, once we form this enolate, we could see that we have this hydroxyl group. This hydroxyl group we could describe as a leaving group in the beta position. And that's what makes this 
um, type of structure unique and suitable for dehydration under uh, basic conditions. That's not normal for an ordinary alcohol, right? Uh, but we're using a different mechanism here. We're doing uh, a two-step mechanism. And after we form our enolate, our second step is to eject the beta leaving group. So our enolate is going to come down. And instead of going out and attacking an electrophile, it's going to shift the pi bond down and kick the leaving group out. And this is the step that is favored in the forward direction because we're losing our molecule of water. And uh, especially in uh, when we apply heat, that's going to favor the elimination reaction. So um, let's see how this is going to apply when we do uh, synthesis problems. So if we have a, um, a target molecule with two functional groups, what if we have a beta hydroxy carbonyl target molecule? If we see this pattern in our target molecule, let's take a let's take a look at this example. We'll, we'll go right back to the um, product we just made. Then a logical retrosynthesis of a beta hydroxy carbonyl is going to focus on that alpha carbon and it's going to make a disconnection at that alpha carbon because we know that alpha carbon was our nucleophile as an enolate, which means the other carbon that we're forming the bond with, that was our electrophile. And what did it look like in the starting material? It was a carbonyl. So when we do our disconnection, it leads us back to Uh, to, uh, in this case, two equivalents of the same molecule, and that would be a um, what looks like a aldol reaction. Let me clean this up a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> so a the disconnection we're going to do here is for the aldol, and um, that gives us um, carbonyl-containing compounds for our starting materials. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our pattern. We're going to look at the pattern of functional groups and, and see that um, we're going to use the disconnection that involves both the carbonyl and the alcohol at the same time. And that's a logical disconnection. Now, if instead, if I have a beta, uh, an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl as my target molecule, We could do, we're going to do the same disconnection, but sometimes it's a little easier to kind of think about adding the water back in first. If you think of doing a functional group in a conversion to go back to the beta hydroxy carbonyl version. So if you add the water back in that we know we lost in the, in the final step steps of the aldol condensation. Now we could see more logically, more easily that we have our alpha carbon uh, as our nucleophile and because I see the alcohol here now now I can see that this was uh, the electrophilic carbon that was the carbonyl right so sometimes it's a little easier to step back one at a time and then we get come back to our same starting materials two equivalents of the aldehyde in this case oops sorry about that